In this video, we discuss about the change between consecutive states in a system. This is one of the most elementary techniques to build a model that is very useful in many practical situations. The change of value is the difference between the future value of a variable that we are interested in and its present value. The modeling strategy in this case is to explain the amount of change as a function of the current value. Sometimes we also have to include some other factors such as past values and or external factors. Once we have the model for the change, this translates into a model for the dynamics of our variable of interest by writing that its future value is its present value plus the change. An important issue to decide when building such a model is how to treat time. In other words, whether the updates in the model are to be done step by step at discrete points or continuously. In the former case, dealing with discrete time leads to different equations where the change is applied in discrete time intervals. A typical example is that of a depositing the interest in a bank account. In the later case, dealing with continuous time leads to differential equations where the change takes place continuously. A typical example is that of the position of a moving car. In this lecture, we will focus on models based on discrete time and different equations. We will discuss about models based on continuous time in a late, later lecture of this course. If we have a data set consisting of the consecutive values of a variable, we can write it in as a sequence of numbers a1, a2, an. We will be interested in the differences between consecutive values and we will build a model for how this difference depends on the current value. Let's take an example of a savings deposit. The initial sum we deposit is 1000 euros and the bank is offering an interest rate of 1% per month. The value of the interest rate is not meant in this example to be realistic. It's just chosen to simplify our reasoning. The goal of our model is to calculate how the deposit is growing in time. Let's denote by an the value of the deposit after n months. The initial value of the deposit is a0 equals 1000. The difference in the deposit after one month is exactly the interest that we gained, which is the interest rate times the amount in the deposit. So we will write the model like this. an plus 1 minus an which we denote sometimes by delta a n is 0, 0, 1 times a n. In other words, a n plus 1 equals 1.01 .01 times a n. So the model in this case is a n equals a 0 times 101 to power n. As a slight variation, we can also ask what happens if you withdraw 50 euros each month. In this case, the change in the deposit from one month to another is given by the interest we gained minus the sum we withdrew. In other words, we can write the model as follows. a n plus 1 minus a n is 0, 0, 001 times a n minus 50. So the model in this case is going to be a n plus 1 equals 101 times a n minus 50. It's a little less obvious what the general form of the model is in this case, and we will return to this in a later video. Please note that what we have is an infinite set of equations giving the value of each of the terms in our sequence as a function of the previous terms. This is called a dynamical system. The change between consecutive values may depend on one or more previous terms and or on external terms. Let's take another example, getting a home mortgage from the bank. Let's assume that the deal you get is for a 1% interest rate for a mortgage value of 80,000 euros with a monthly payment of 900 euros. We want to write a model that's able to answer two questions. How much do you still have to pay after n months? And how long does it take to pay the whole mortgage? So let's denote by bn 
the value of the loan after end payments. So this means that B0 is 80,000. The change in the value of the loan from one month to another is increased by the interest and decreased by the monthly payment. In other words, we would write the model as Bn plus 1 minus Bn equals 001 times Bn minus 900, which means that Bn plus 1 equals 101 times Bn minus 900. If we write this model in a standard spreadsheet calculator, we can get the dynamics of the loan. In this case, it looks like the loan will be paid off just after 18 years. Let's take now another example on the growth of a yeast culture. Assume that we have a data set with measurements on the size of the culture at various time points, and the problem is to propose a model for the growth of the culture. One simple idea is to look at the size of the change between two consecutive measurements as a function of the current measurement. If we calculated these changes in a spreadsheet calculator, we would get a table like this. And we could plot the change in biomass as a function of the current value of the biomass. On this plot, we can observe that the change can be approximated as a straight line, for example, like this. And we can measure the slope of the line, which in this case turns out to be about 0.5. So our proposed model will be delta Pn, which is Pn plus 1 minus Pn, is 0.5 times Pn. And the general form of the model is Pn plus 1 equals 1.5 times Pn. This means that Pn is 1.5 to power n times P0. And this means since P0 was 9.6 is 1.5 to power n times 9.6. Please note that this is a good model for the little data we have, but the model predicts infinite growth, which is certainly unrealistic and unlikely to hold against more data. Let's assume that we get more data, and the change in the consecutive values depends on the current value as shown in the plot. We will refine our model to reflect this data set. So we note that the size of the culture levels out eventually at about 665 units. Moreover, the growth rate slows down to almost zero as we approach this maximum value, as we can see from the flat shape of the plot close to the maximum value. Remember that our old model was Pn plus 1 minus Pn equals K times Pn, which was unsatisfactory because it predicted infinite growth. We would like to build a new model with just a small change in the old model. So, for example, we could replace k in the old model with a simple function that approaches 0 as pn approaches the maximum value. And such a function could simply be r times 665 minus pn where we include a constant r just to give us some flexibility when fitting the model to the data. So the new model will be pn plus 1 minus pn equals r times 665 minus pn times pn. To test if our new model makes sense with respect to experimental data, we can compare pn plus 1 minus pn and 665 minus pn times pn. If this model is correct, we should see a linear dependency between them. From the plot, we can see that there is indeed a reasonable proportionality between them. We can even estimate the slope of this line, and in this case, we get that it's about 0 0.00082. So our final model is Pn plus 1 equals 
Pn plus 0 0.00082 times 665 minus Pn times Pn. To test the model, we can simply calculate the values according to the model we obtained and compare them against the experimental data. As we can see, the result is a very good fit. We will discuss later in this course how to measure the goodness of a fit. For now, we will only judge the, if the fit is good through visual inspection.